So John, I heard you have some recent news about ATM machines and how it's being used against us now. This has kind of been getting a little bit of press the past week or so. Uh, Secret Service actually issued um, a bulletin on this as well as some other federal agencies. And this is kind of a ATM attack we haven't really talked about a lot on the show before. We talk about skimming a lot, yes. but this is different. This is called jackpotting. And what jackpotting is, is bad actors mm -hmm. are able to compromise the ATM machine, usually by physically accessing them. If they can get access to the back of the ATM machine, open it up, replace the hard drive with their own you know, copy of the operating system with their malware implanted on there. And then they can set it up so, you know, you could go to, as a bad guy, go to the ATM, put yeah. in like some random code or whatever, some code that they predefine and it just spits money out to them. A new trend in the U.S. is around jackpotting ATMs. It's sort of gone through Russia at the beginning, then, you know, spread in Asia a little bit, then to Mexico and now into the U.S. So we'll have to first restrict physical access to it, right? Mm -hmm. And then what other steps do you think we could take you know, to make sure this doesn't really impact at a larger scale. It's probably not something for most of our viewers, unless they're in the financial sector, mm -hmm. uh, and they're probably already trying to deal with this problem. But having good secure access, not allowing people to have access to the back of the device. I, I also thought it was real interesting is that a lot of these uh, attackers are using endoscopes to get into the machine yep. and then, you know, able to hack into it because they're Windows XP machines mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. So yeah. Windows XP is obviously not very secure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think it's interesting to see that it might be those drive-through ATMs. And, you know, these are not like the highly secured versions of ATMs. And, you know, they might go after the older versions in terms of operating systems. Because we know that in the credit card space, we have PCI and it's good about complying with the data security standard. Mm -hmm. But I think we've not seen something like this in a while, at least in the U.S. And I think from what you said, it's the first of its kind. So we would probably see the retailers, you know, the folks that have those drive-through ATMs and not in a secure banking sort of facility might want to pay attention to this. Right. For most people watching, it's not going to really be something they have to worry too much about. It's more kind of advice to the financial industry, people who actually have ATMs that they might have deployed. You should be watchful that they don't get tampered with. There's many versions of this malware mm -hmm. that they use. One of the more popular ones is called Plotus D. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. In one version of that, the bad guys had actually uh, installed a cell phone mm. inside the device, inside the ATM, and they were using that to send commands so they could e send an SMS te text message to the phone uh -huh. to activate the malware to give yeah. the, uh, you know, to, Command to push back. out money to the person so they could kind of do it on demand. So anyway, I just thought it was a, a good one to uh, bring up. I yeah. know there's a lot of press around this. Some of these ATMs also have USB or other types of input ports on them that may or may not be exposed. So you'd want to check to see if there are, because those could be entry ways for a bad actor to get access to that ATM um, to install or implant malware on there. If you're an owner of an ATM machine, make sure you physically secure it. Make sure you have cameras that watch, you know, activity for that. If you're an end user, avoid shady ATM machines. You know, don't just go in and get cash out in machines that you don't think is physically protected.